Guess who went to Repticon this weekend? Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Yes, I went to Repticon Orlando this weekend, and it really wasn't something that I was planning on doing. My wife and I have been playing it safe ever since the start of the pandemic, and we've been avoiding going to expos and going to large gatherings. But we've re both been recently vaccinated, and we work around children all the time, and we haven't gotten sick, so we figured that we could risk this trip. It kind of started with an email. Well, it actually did start with an email. I received an email from a subscriber and his name is Jeff Mickle. And um, Jeff approached me. He said that he really liked my channel and he loved tarantulas, but unfortunately he could not keep one for himself. I think it has something to do with his wife and maybe a phobia that she has. And that is very real. Um, you know, before you scoff or, or think any less of that, um, if someone has an irrational fear, it might seem irrational to you, but it is very real for them. So I can definitely respect that and I see where he's coming from. I personally went against my wife's wishes when I got my first tarantula and she really was angry with me for a long time about doing it. In fact, she wanted me to take it back and it took a lot of convincing on my part to get her to let me keep it. Um, and it took a while for her to get over that. It, it was the initial, every time she saw it, she would cringe and jump and things like that. And it took a little while for her to get over it to the point where she got used to it being around and eventually got to the point where where she got to see how calm and gentle they were and that they weren't really all that dangerous, especially since they just stay in their cage. And um, she eventually ended up getting one for herself for her library and she has gotten over it since. And now here I am with my collection of tarantulas. But it could have gone a whole different way if she was a little bit more insistent on me not having them and I probably would not be having tarantulas to this very day. Having said that, he made me a proposal and he offered to buy a tarantula for me for the channel and kind of get to experience the whole thing vicariously through me through updates on the channel and things like that. Kind of like an adopt a tarantula kind of thing. And as tempting as it seemed, and I've had people do that for me before, they've bought me tarantulas, not necessarily for this particular reason, but um, you know, I had to turn them down. And the reason for that is because I kind of feel like I'm at capacity here in the tarantula haven. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant to take in new tarantulas because these tarantulas are getting bigger, they're needing larger enclosures, and I'm quickly running out of space. So I got to be kind of careful what I take in. So I actually turned them down. I graciously turned them down. I said, if you know, I, as much as I would like to take you up on your offer, I can't do it at this time because I've got a lot of tarantulas that, you know, are taking up space. Maybe if, you know, I send off some mails and make a little bit of room here and there, then I could possibly do it in the future. But instead, I said, you know, if there's a particular tarantula that you're interested in, maybe I have a spiderling of that species, and maybe I can kind of keep you updated on that. And um, he said, you know, that that seemed pretty cool and all that. Well, later on, he became a Patreon. And, um, you know, it was kind of cool to see his name pop up on my Patreon. And um, he still wanted to send me some money. And I told him that that was completely up to him. But him being a Patreon was payment enough. But he still sent me some money. So I kind of mulled it over and I thought about it and I thought about it. And I knew that there was a Repticon coming up. So I said, why not? Why not go? Uh, we we're vaccinated. We've been cooped up. We haven't done this kind of thing in a long time. Let's just do it. So we did. And I wanted to go see what I could possibly pick out. I figured I could make room for one more tarantula and see what I could pick out and something that he would like to see grow up and turn into a big, beautiful specimen. So that was my whole reason behind going to Repticon. I also had another Patreon subscriber 
uh, Michael Gonzalez, who had also donated some money just because. And I figured, why not do it for him too? So I ended up getting at least two tarantulas for those two people. I got a couple, I actually got a couple more things than that, but I'd like to share with you what I got at Repticon. The experience at Repticon was actually kind of nice. You can't just show up at any time and buy tickets at the door. You have to reserve a spot online and they give you a time frame. So you show up during your time frame. I think it's like a two hour time frame, a two hour slot. So you show up, you do your shopping, and then they clear the entire venue and bring in the new group. Um, and while I felt comfortable shopping, um, you know, I was able to browse around and look at everything that I wanted to look at. I didn't, I was not able to shoot as much footage as I would have liked to because uh, I was so busy browsing and everything. Whereas normally I would have done all that, but then I would have taken the time to go get some footage here and there and so on. So I felt like I missed some stuff and I didn't shoot as much as I wanted to, but that's okay. You, it was the usual bearded dragons and ball pythons and all these other things and so on. So um, I know you guys are not all that interested in seeing the same old stuff rehashed, but you're more interested in what I got. So here's a little bit of footage, but then we'll get into rehousing these guys into their new enclosures. So that was Repticon and um, it was really nice to have the tables spread out like they were. They kind of spread everything out throughout the larger area and uh, it made it better for us to be able to walk around and not be bumping into people and that kind of stuff. So it was really easy to avoid people when you wanted to, especially while you were walking around. As you can see, not everybody was socially distancing. Uh, some people did crowd around on certain tables and stuff, which of course aggravated my wife. She doesn't like groups anyway but uh, yeah especially when we're trying to be safe and they're breathing on your neck right here so she she was about ready to start throwing some elbows but uh, the 
that with the extra space, we were at least able to back off and allow people to see what they wanted to see and then move back up whenever we were ready to. But of course, if you're looking at something and you got somebody right there, it's a little bit aggravating to have to step back, especially if you really want something and you were worried about them taking it. So that was something that was a little bit of a pain in the butt, but everyone was masked and it was a really cool thing. So let's take a look at what I got and let's see what I picked up in honor of Jeff and Michael. All right, in Jeff's honor, I picked up a Brachypelma albiceps, and that is commonly known as the Mexican Golden Red Rump. And I had been wanting one of these for quite a while. The Brachypelma genus is one of my favorites, and um, I love these, how they get their nice golden carapace, and I love that they get so nice and chunky, just like all the other Brachypelmas. I hope that Jeff really likes my choice of species. This species is very long lived and can live over 20 years in captivity. I'm putting the Brachypelma albiceps in a tarantula crib sling enclosure. And uh, these are available on their website. They got that nice magnetic lid on them. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. Let's go ahead and get this little guy in there. So these are some tiny little guys right now. Went right in there. All right. So there it is. In his new home. Pop that lid on there and we're good to go. This next species that I picked up is the Aphonopelma moderatum and this is known as the Rio Grande Gold and this is another long-lived species and I picked this one up in honor of Michael. This is another species that I had been wanting for a little while and um, I don't own very many Afonopelma but the Afonopelma genus is so big and there are so many species in it but a lot of them look very similar. But this one is kind of different. It takes on a nice golden color with some black banding on it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing this one as an adult. Let's see if this one will be as easy as the other one. Come on, big guy. Uh, all right, you're going everywhere but where I want you to. There you go, all right. I love it when they make it easy on you. Okay. So there he is. This one's a little bit more lively. And it'll burrow right down, make itself at home. And these are definitely going into my incubator because uh, they don't do so well if they get too cold. So I wanna make sure that they stay nice and warm. And this next one I picked up for myself, this is the Salmopius pulcher. And this is another species that is has been on my list for a little while. In fact, all the Salmopius, I really love my Salmopius arminias and I love my Salmopius cambridgei. So this is definitely one that I wanted to add. There was a Salmopius victoriae that I was really looking at, but the price tag was too big and I was not ready to spend that much money yet for uh, a Salmopius species. So I went with the poulter. And already you can see some beautiful coloration coming in on this specimen. I really like the Salmopius genus and um, having had experience with Salmopius arminia and Salmopius cambridgei, they look very similar as spiderlings, but this one actually looks a little bit different. So it's kind of neat to see that. I'll be rehousing the Salmopius poulter in this amic box that I converted into an enclosure and they make very good enclosures for my arboreals. I don't imagine that it's going to be easy to <laughs> get over. Hopefully it will be, but they like to bolt. So we will see. Come on. 
There you go. All right. It did make it easy on me. So beautiful. Look at it just sitting there. So my next pickup is not a tarantula, but these are isopods. And these are armadillidium gestroy. And I was really, these are very high on my list as to which ones I wanted to get next. I love the beautiful coloration on these, that nice yellow spotting that they have. And I was really wanting to get some. Uh, I, I was hoping that they would have some and they sure did. Uh, they only had a couple of them, so I lucked out. And this is something that my wife and my daughter both enjoy. So this is a win-win for all of us and we could experience that. My current colonies that I have are doing very well. In fact, they're having babies and my colonies are exploding. So this is definitely a route that I want to go in keeping more isopods. <laughs> All right, so these are the Armadillidium gestroy. And there should be 10 in here. I actually have not counted. Probably not a smart thing, but I really didn't have time to go in there and dig them out and all that so this is the biggest one right here so there's number one they are chunky little guys they're big beautiful can't get over the coloration all right there you go all right that's one a little piece of carrot in there. I see two. I'm just going to dump the rest out. And there they are gathered to the bottom. I'm going to trust that they're all there. And last but not least, 
I picked up some rubber ducky isopods. These are a dream come true right now. Um, I was not going to get them. In fact, I was torn and uh, my wife saw me trying to make a decision as to what I wanted to get. So she took it out of my hands and she bought them for me. So um, again, she really enjoys the isopods. So this was something that she could enjoy as well. So she didn't mind forking over the money for it. And uh, <laughs> I hope they're in there because I don't see any right now but they are probably some of the cutest isopods that you can get a hold of right now. Oh, there's one right there. All right, and they like to play dead. I noticed that they'll roll up into a little ball and sometimes they won't come out of it for a little while. So they'll just stay there like that. So they're pretty good at doing that. Oh, there we go. So yeah, these guys are so cute. And uh, I just wanted to get them because my colonies are doing so well, I figured it was time to do that. So these are a little bit more difficult to keep. So hopefully I've got my, my husbandry down so that I can keep these alive and well. And she picked up not one, but two of them for me so I could get a good colony started. I know they're in there. <laughs> they're just buried. Oh, there's another one. And the rubber duckies tend to like things a little bit more moist. So they don't need as much ventilation as the gastroy. You need to have them in more damp substrate. Just saw another one. kind of blend in with the, uh, the substrate there. All right, let's get the other ones in.
and I almost forgot one last thing that is necessary for them to do well. This chunk of limestone right here. Need to put it in here somewhere. Hopefully not where I'm going to squash one. There we go. Because they live in caves in Thailand, they get a lot of limestone in their diet, so that is essential for their survival. And those were my Repticon picks. I hope you liked them. Jeff, I thank you so much for your contribution. I hope you liked what I picked out. And I look forward to bringing you updates with everything that she does. Keep your fingers crossed. And thank you so much, Michael, for your contribution. I hope you like what I did with your money. And um, I look forward to bringing you updates on that as well. And thank you so much to my wife. Uh, she, she spoils me. Sometimes she enables me. I was not looking forward to her buying me some rubber duckies, but I am completely in love and I hope that they do well and I hope that they reproduce and give me lots and lots of babies. And before I go, I'd like to give a huge shout out and thank you to Michael Dean of the Exotic Kingdom. He's the one that picked out the specimens for me. I gave him a list of what species I wanted and I picked them up at Repticon and they are beautiful, healthy specimens. So thank you so much for that, Michael. And Michael has been my tarantula plug for years now <laughs> and he's one of the ones that uh, got me some of my first tarantulas and really helped me get into the hobby quite a bit so uh, definitely check out the exotickingdom.com he's always got some good stuff that does it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to become a Patreon yourself, I have a link down below in the description as well as all the others. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas and isopods, especially rubber duckies.